Gentlemen, welcome to the Gird Up Podcast. If you're watching or listening, I'm glad that you're here. Welcome to a community of believers where young men learn to be the men that God created them to be. Working hard to be those men, the men that God created us to be. Working hard to be men after God's own heart. Hopefully we can be a positive influence on you. And glad you're ready to join the revolution. Here we go. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the three things I pray about every single day. But before we do that, check out this awesome shirt from Lion of Judah Clothing Company. It's the God is greater than the ups and downs logo or symbols or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it came from Lion of Judah Clothing Company. Man, I think everybody should be a walking billboard for Jesus. I think it should be a literal and figurative walking billboard for Jesus. When people see you, they should know what you're about when they see you. Um, they should know by your actions and your words, of course, that, that you love Jesus. But they should also know just looking at you, man, that guy's a Christian. Um, I also think it's healthy and probably a good thing to up the ante, man. If you're wearing something that talks about Jesus all the time, you better be acting like somebody that follows Jesus. Uh, so I think it's a great thing for everybody rocking Jesus gear all the time. So you can go get this one. I'll put the link down in the bio below. Fellas, as you know, I am an advocate, as should all people who are influences over others. I'm an advocate for daily prayer. Now, Daily prayer shouldn't be one of those things as like a habit or a routine that you um, like. You check it off your list and you feel proud about it as you go. It should be one of those things that you need to do. Like you wake up in the morning, um, you drink a cup of coffee, you poop, and you say your prayers. Like it should be something you cannot start your day without doing. Right? And that is a habit that you need to build. You need to build that daily habit every single day. Now, maybe you won't pray in the morning. I think it's probably best to pray in the morning. Um, I think starting your day in meditation and prayer. So I always start my day. I mean, so like, for example, today, I got up at 6.30 and went to go lift. A lot of times I'll get up at 6 o'clock and go play basketball. I'm not getting up and trying to say my prayers before I go off and do that. Okay, But then when I come back, especially this time of year when I don't have class or something I have to get off to right away, I know that I don't have to, like, the earliest I have to work right now um, on a given day is like 10.30 in the morning. So I know I'm going to have time uh, throughout my morning to read my Bible. So I don't have to get up earlier um, than those things and do that, which is a blessing. Um, oftentimes during the school year, um, I will also have a gap. And if I don't have a gap, I'll have a gap later in the day that I can do that, um, but usually before lunch. If I don't do it before lunch, I find that I'll have a hard time doing it. If I absolutely can't get my Bible reading in during the day, um, I've got an awesome app on my phone called the Abide app. Um, and... It's one of the best resources I've found as far as like listening to someone else reading the Bible. There's background noise. You can pick the accent. You can pick who reads for you. Um, you can pick which commentary. You can pick playlists, all that kind of stuff. It's a really, really good app. And if I just can't get, if I just don't have time in the day, um, I'll at least throw that on and listen to that at the end of the day. Or if I'm having a hard time sleeping, I'll throw it on and listen to it. Sometimes I just need a pick-me-up, and so I'll pick a playlist, and I'll listen to it there. Sometimes in the gym, music just isn't cutting it, so I listen to the Bible app, whatever it is. Okay, um, It's a blessing to have, and it's a blessing to do. But you need to say your prayers every single day, and it should be part of your daily routine. Right? And I just posted, like two days ago, I just posted it on the website. So if you go in the, you go in the section, oh, what do you call it? Go into show notes. You can click on the link to the website. If you go to the website, you will find um, I posted a po PDF poster um, of the four my four favorite models for prayer. So like procedures for prayer, essentially, um, and, and just different ways that you can pray, different structures to your prayers, and it helps guide your prayers a little bit and do those things. Now today, I didn't use one of those. I didn't even write anything down for my prayers. I do almost every day write something down, like write down what I'm praying for. I like to record that. If I, I'll look back every once in a while and be like, oh shoot, I haven't been praying for this person. I said I would, that kind of thing. I like to be able to keep track of who I'm praying for and what I'm praying about. Um, but today, and every once in a while, I will just say, you know what, today I'm going to meditate. I'm going to talk to God about whatever comes up. Um, and so I did not sleep. I had drank a ton of coffee, so I probably wouldn't have slept anyway. But I just went out and laid in the hammock in the backyard where I was quiet and peaceful and talked to Jesus for, I don't, honestly, I don't even know how long. Um, I had an alarm set for like two and a half hours so I wouldn't be late for the things I had to do. And I didn't go for the full two and a half hours. Um, but I did. I sat there. And I talked to Jesus. And I started out my prayer by just saying, like, Lord, 
guide me through this. Um, tell me what you want to talk to me about. Help me to you know bring things up to you. And um, after I did that, he guided my heart, and we had some conversation, and it was good. It was good. It was a blessing. Now, doing that every single day, I think, um, wouldn't be as much of a blessing as it is to do it every once in a while. Uh, I think you need to be really intentional about what you pray about, and the best way to do that is to record your prayers and use some formatting to it. So tomorrow, I will most definitely use choose one of those formats that's on the PDF, and I will pray that way. Um, it'll be a little bit more organized, and I'll make sure I get through it, especially since tomorrow I have a lot of things going on, and I'm going to have a busier day. I'm going to kind of have to knock things out as I go. I'll probably have to set up like a, I'll set a lot of times if it's like a five point prayer section, I'll set a five minute timer for each one, and then for the intercession one, I'll probably do ten minutes. So it takes me about thirty five minutes to pray through everything, or t- uh, at least twenty five, probably more like thirty five or forty minutes to pray through the whole thing. Um, And I know that sounds intimidating. You don't have to start that way. Uh, It's just easy for me. If it's five sections, I spend five minutes praying for each section. Um, So if it's the, oh boy, I can't even remember. It's A-C-T-S. So that one's four. If you just set a timer for each of those four minutes, uh, for each of those four sections, set a five-minute timer, and that's 20 minutes of prayer right there. It's going to go way faster than you think it is. Anyway, there's three things that I pray about every single day. Right. And some of these things are things that have come into my life just over time, and I decided, you know what, I want to do this. This is something I should be doing and I want to do. Others I found in books, um, and uh, one of them, frankly, I don't even know how it started. I just know that it's something I pray about every single day. Uh, the first thing I pray for every single day is my future wife. And I don't say this to be like, <laughs> and I definitely don't say this to try and pick up girls. Um, although, lady, it, sorry. Uh, I don't say this because I'm trying to impress anybody or pick up girls or anything like that. That is not the goal at all. I genuinely want to have a happy, healthy marriage that pleases God. Like, I want to have a kick-ass marriage someday, right? And uh, I'm not always a kick-ass dude. So, it's very important for me to pray every single day about the relationship I'll have. And in order to do that, I pray. Uh, what it says on my prayer journal when I when I pray about it is I write Ezer Konegdo. Now Ezer Konegdo is the uh, Hebrew word that means help made suitable. That's what we that's what we translated into as um, in English. Now it's a little bit more complex of a word than that. It's a conversation for a different time. But I'll write Ezer Konegdo in my prayer journal when I pray for my future wife and our relationship. Um, and I start off by praying for her. Um, I pray over her. I pray that uh, she's strong in faith that she knows Jesus as he really is, not as she's taught to believe in him, not as she imagines him to be, but as he really truly is and that she knows him and that she loves him. Uh, I pray that she, uh, you know, I pray over her heart. It's just different things every single day. Um, I I, I ask the Lord to guide my prayers, which is why sometimes I don't always remember how I prayed for her, frankly. Um, But I pray for her heart. Um, I pray that uh, she's healthy and happy and strong. Uh, I pray that he's actively preparing her for the day when we're wedded, right, and and we spend life together. Um, I pray for our future relationship, that we'll find ways to work through problems, that we'll be Christ-centered in everything. Um, As far as praying for her goes, I'll often pray that she's faithful in the Word, uh, that she's faithful in prayer. I'll often pray that she finds a church home that serves her well. Um, Pray that she's filled with the Spirit. Um, I'll, sometimes I'll just go through Proverbs 31, and every time it lists a characteristic for a woman of godly character, right? Um, then I'll pray that she displays that characteristic, right? And, and to help guide her and help her grow into that. Um, I often pray that her sins are forgiven. I pray that she comes in daily sorrow and repentance to our Heavenly Father, lays her, lays her sins at His feet, and asks for His forgiveness. Um, and then, like I said, I pray for our relationship. I pray that we, you know, learn to work through things together. I pray that we're Christ-centered in everything that we do. I pray that we're on fire for Jesus, that we're, um, magnetic to other Christians, that we're magnetic to non-believers as well, so that they see us and they want to be like us, they want to be with us, they want to be around us, um, that we're energy and light for everybody around us all the time. Um, I pray that we're good parents, that we're healthy, happy, strong parents, and I pray for myself. I pray that um, I will be the kind of man a woman like that will want to marry. I pray that um, I'm being prepared right now. I pray that uh, the Lord keeps me faithful to her even now. 
um, that I'm engaging in behaviors which are only going to benefit our marriage later on and benefit our marriage bed. So, of course, that I pray against all the lusts and sins and things like that. Um, I pray that he prepares my heart. I pray that uh, he continues to, to take me on a path um, that will prepare me for her. And um, this actually kind of ties in with the second thing I'm going to talk about. Um, but I, so every once in a while, somebody will say to me, like, how do you even know you're going to get married? You're not married yet. How can you pray for somebody you don't know? All that kind of stuff. I don't even know how to say this. And, I, and I've never heard the voice of God, like, open up through the clouds and say, talk to me about my future wife. I haven't, but I know in my heart, and when I pray about it, I'm just covered in this amazing peace um, about the fact that she's on her way. I don't know how long it's going to take. I don't know when I'm going to meet her. I don't know if I've already met her and I just haven't figured it out yet. I don't know any of that. I don't know anything about it. I don't know. I don't know. Every once in a while I meet a girl, I'm like, yep, somebody like her, and sometimes it you know, it turns into something, sometimes it doesn't. All I know is, every time I pray for my future wife, every time I pray for my Ezra Konegdo, I just feel the Lord whispering to my heart, I know. Be patient. She's coming. And that's all I can say. And so I continue to faithfully pray for her, and I look eagerly look forward to that day. Um, and I eagerly continue to prepare myself for the day that we meet. I recognize that I'm oftentimes not the guy that that girl wants to marry and so i'm working on that right and that's all i can do um and, and that's a good and, and and that's not saying that i'm changing my personality or anything like that i'm saying i'm trying to be even more if i want to find a wife who's absolutely on fire for jesus i want to be on fire for jesus too right if i want to find a wife who's industrious and strong and is an excellent mother I got to prepare myself to be industrious and strong and be an excellent father, right? Um, that's going to be a match set. And so I just pray that I'm ready for that relationship when it comes. Uh, oftentimes, women who are absolutely on fire marry men who are absolutely on fire. And so I want to be that guy because that's the kind of women I want to be with. That's the kind of woman I want to be with. Um, and so, and like I said, every time I pray about it, the Lord says, I know. We're working on it. Be patient. And I, I can't wait for that day. It's going to be awesome. Second thing I pray about, and actually kind of ties in with the first, is I pray about my destiny. Um, and, and I know that word gets has weird connotations sometimes. And I, I know that a lot of Christians will just throw that word out as if it doesn't have any place here. Um, but God has promised that he has good works in a, that he has prepared in advance for us to do. And he talks all the time about having a plan for us, plan to prosper us, not to harm us. In Jeremiah, um, in the book of Joshua, he talks consistently about the plan he had for the Israelites. Um, in the New Testament, um, Paul and Peter both talk about the idea that um, God has laid out things before us to do and we should go out and go do them. And I see evidence of that in my own life. I see evidence of that in the lives of the people around me. And I'm confident um, that the Lord has prepared awesome things for me to do. He has, like, none of this, this podcast, this isn't me. Like, I, I know I'm the one that does the work. Like, I'm the one that does, like, but I, I cannot make, I've tried. I cannot make a podcast without talking to my Heavenly Father first. And not a good one, at least. I've made some really bad, stupid, low-quality podcasts <laughs> in the last five years. And every single one of them came after I talked to Jesus. And either I was pretty sure I should talk about something else, but I was like, you know, I prepared this anyway. I'm just going to say it. Sometimes that goes really poorly. Other times I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to skip my prayers today. I'm going to skip my Bible study. I'm going to do a podcast instead. Never goes well. Never goes well. And I'm not saying that all my words are inspired and I'm speaking the inspired word of God and you should write this down. And it's a, you know, I'm not saying any of that. I'm saying... Um, I could not do this without my Savior helping me and my Father helping me without the Spirit doing His work in me and in you. It's just I couldn't do it, and there would be no reason to do it. Um, I feel a strong sense of destiny about it, and I also know that someday this podcast is going to end. It might be when I graduate from the seminary and go to my first church. It might be next week. I don't know. I know that this is not my forever gig, right? Um, but I know that this project is shaping me and molding me and fashioning me into a much better man than I was before. And I continue to grow. 
I continue to know Jesus better. It pushes me in my faith, and it helps me with actually the third thing I pray about. We'll talk about that in just a second. But I am confident that the Lord has a plan, and he has things laid out that he wants me to accomplish on my way to be with him for eternity. And I think the best word for that is destiny. Stephen Mansfield is where I got that uh, um, word destiny from. I love the way he writes about it and talks about it. Um, He's written all kinds of books about it, actually. Um, in his book about, ooh, never, never back down, I think is what it's called. I don't know. In his book about the life of Winston Churchill, he talks about the destiny uh, of Winston Churchill and how God clearly had a destiny in mind for Winston Churchill. You look at his life, you can't deny it. Same thing with uh, Abraham Lincoln. Oh man, if there was ever a man with a destiny, it was Abraham Lincoln. He was nothing. He continued to be nothing. He was always nothing. And then all of a sudden he was president of the United States. The man had a destiny, and it was laid out by God, and there's no way he, all by himself, made it happen. Um, In uh, Mansfield's book of Manly Men, he talks consistently about destiny. He talks consistently about, um, again, how God has prepared good works for men, and he's prepared those men for good works. Um, Or maybe you don't want to use the word good works. Maybe it's projects in the kingdom. I don't know what word you want to use. But destiny is definitely a part of my life as a Christian. And it's not just big, important men like Abraham Lincoln and Winston Churchill and, you know, Douglas MacArthur and all those men. Destiny is not reserved for the, the quote unquote great men who do great things um, and, and are world leaders or produce millions of records or write best selling books. You have a destiny that's just as important and just as strong as anybody else. Even if the destiny that God has laid in your life is nothing more than living a quiet life where you are absolutely joyful and happy and raise a house full of wonderful, joyful, happy kids and mow lawns for a living. God bless you. Right? There's nothing wrong with that. There is more honor in that than being a king. But every single one of us does have a destiny that the Lord has laid in front of us and good works laid out in advance for us to do. And so every single day I pray that the Lord equips me to work out my salvation with fear and trembling and to accomplish the things that he has set before me to do. I pray that he gives me discernment to recognize what he has laid out for me to do. And I pray that he gives me the tools to do it. Physical, emotional, spiritual, relational, whatever. Whatever I need, I ask that he gives me the ability to do it. A lot of times that means i got to pray for integrity. A lot of times that means i got to pray for discipline. And a lot of times that means i got to pray that I'll be a good steward of the gifts that he's given because um, I'm also confident, I'm a, I'm a firm believer in the idea that uh, the Lord's not going to give you more responsibility. He's not going to bring you to the next stage of your life until you've fulfilled your responsibility in this stage of life or that you're fulfilling it. So um, Jesus talks several times in several parables about the idea that those who can be trusted with few things, those who can be trusted with a little, are going to be blessed with more things. Those who cannot be trusted with little, even the things that they have will be taken away. If you can't be trusted with a little bit, he's going to take that away as well. Okay, And so that's definitely part of the project here too. That's definitely part of your destiny as well. The idea that you need to step fully into the role that God has given you now, own it, make it happen, be all about bringing glory to God in the role that you have now, and pray that the Lord continues to prepare you for the next step, whatever that might be, wherever that might go. Uh, I think an easy picture of that idea is the military, right? You're not going to be promoted unless you fulfill your role right now well. Now, I know sometimes that happens. But in a perfect military, you would not be promoted unless you fulfill your role perfectly. And then you move on to the next. You learn how to fulfill that role. Then you move on to the next. You learn how to fulfill that role. That's the way your life works too. Right now, you might be a single dude going through college. right? Be a master at being a single dude going through college. right? Step fully into your role. As a, as a young, single guy going into college. You want to find yourself a girlfriend? Pray about it. I'm not saying don't approach girls and talk to them and all that kind of stuff. But make sure that you're the kind of guy, the woman you want to marry, was going to want to be with. Okay? And I don't mean the clothes. I don't mean the, the attitude. I don't mean, you know, even the body or any of that kind of stuff. Although if you want to marry a fit chick, it's probably a good idea to be fairly healthy. 
right? All that kind of stuff. It all matters, right? It's going to be part of, like, the Lord lays convictions on all of our hearts. This is definitely part of what's going on in my life right now, and I guarantee he's got a plan for you as well. And you're not going to move to the next stage of life until you step fully into the stage of life that you're in right now. Own it. Dive into it. Master it. Take hold of it. Press on. Press forward. And move on with you and, and be prepared for the next stage of life. The third thing that I always pray for every single day is that God surrounds me with men who are on fire for him. Um, I thank God that I've been surrounded by men who are wonderful almost my entire life. Um, as a kid, I grew up with like the ultimate American Christian upbringing. There was a whole bunch of strong Christian men in our church, and I grew up in a parsonage, and they were wonderful to me. They were wonderful to my family. They took a, a an interest in me personally, not just as like a general interest in kids even, but like an interest in me personally, helping me to grow, helping me to develop. They taught me everything from mowing lawns to counting money um, to like the way I behave, the way I dress. A, a lot of those things are direct results of the men that were just around when I was a kid. I learned how to lay drywall. I learned how to lay carpet. I learned how to uh, like sing a hymn, sing parts. I didn't learn those things from my family. I learned those things from the men that were around my family. Um, I, I learned how to be an usher at church. I learned how to treat a lady. Um, I learned all of those things from the men around me at church. And that was a wonderful blessing. But I also found myself as a sophomore in college, even at a church school, Googling, what does it mean to be a man? I didn't know. I didn't know and I needed help. So I asked the Lord for help and I've been asking him ever since. Hey, Lord, surround me with men who are on fire for you. Now, when I first started praying that prayer, there were not a lot of men on fire for Jesus that were around me. My dad was about an hour away. And frankly, there were not a lot of those men around me on a daily basis. In fact, most of the men that were around me on a daily basis were not on fire for Jesus. Even the men in the church were not on fire for Jesus, and they weren't faithfully walking out their calling as men of God. They weren't, and that's just brutal honesty. They were not, and they were not good influences on me. And I tried so hard to find a community of believers to be a part of, and the Lord said, I've got a different plan. Instead of giving you that community of believers in Milwaukee and surrounding you with men after God's own heart there, I'm going to uproot you. I'm going to bring you to a small town in south central Minnesota. I'm going to get you stuck here for three years. And I'm going to surround you with men after God's own heart there. And it's not going to be an easy thing. It's going to take you time. It's going to take you work to build a community. But oh my goodness, am I blessed to know the young men in my life today. You would have told me a year ago that I would be actively being mentored by a bunch of 18, 19, and 20-year-olds. Oh my goodness, I would have laughed. I would have said, no, I'm the one doing the mentoring. But I've been blessed so much by the relationships with the guys I've met in the last year. Holy cow. I asked the Lord to surround me with men on fire for him, and he did. But he did it in a different state than I expected, and I'm doing something completely different than I ever expected. And I even tried to hold on to the things I was doing before and my identity from before, and the Lord was like, nope, not going to bless you with it until you let go. <laughs> and it has turned out to be the one of the greatest blessings of my life. And you know what? I'm still praying for more men on fire around me every single day. I am right now surrounded by G dudes on fire for Jesus. And yet I want more. I pray every day that he gives me more men who are absolutely on fire for him and surrounds me with more men who are even more on fire for him. Because I want to be on fire for Jesus and I want to be contagious. I just, I, I can't, I can't get enough. I can't do enough. I just want to love my Savior and walk with other guys that are on fire for him just as much as I am. And if I'm going to be around guys that are on fire for Jesus, I better be on fire too. And they all go together. They all go together, right? I believe that it is part of my destiny to work with young men and to help them be the men that God created them to be. And so I'm doing this, which I also believe is a part of my destiny, not just because I needed to be a better man and this is actively shaping me into being a better man, but because I want to be surrounded by strong Christian young men. And guess what a podcast like this does? It attracts strong Christian young men to your side and they want to be friends with you. Because you're a man after God's own heart, which is a, such a wonderful blessing. The other thing it does is it is actively preparing me for a ministry that I'm going to go into that I said I would never do, but the Lord was like, no, we're going to do that. And now I'm like, okay. 
And it's also actively preparing me to be a better husband and a better father than I could have ever done before. And I've dated a lot of girls. It's not a proud. I'm not bragging about that. I'm saying I've gone on a lot of dates with a lot of girls, but I can confidently say I have. I've met, but I've never been on a date with a girl that was on fire for Jesus the way I hope my wife is on fire for Jesus one day. And someday I'll meet that girl, and we are going to take off, and it's going to be awesome. But I won't be ready for that until the Lord says I'm ready for that. And I don't know when I'm going to be ready for that, but one day He's going to send it to me. I guarantee it because it's part of. It's part of that destiny that I know the Lord's got for me. And I, I don't have a I don't have like a, a written down promise for any of those things. The Lord never tapped me on the shoulder and said, Go start a podcast. In fact I tried to quit the podcast multiple times and I think that's a sign that it's part of my destiny too, the fact that the Lord wouldn't let me quit. God is so much greater than a bunch of boxes that you can check off. And a lot of times we try to put God in a box and be like, these are the things God does do and he doesn't do. These are the things he can do and he can't do. Your life is not going to look like mine. Jesus is not going to talk to you the same way that he talks to me. But man, listen when he does. And if you're not hearing Jesus talk to you, dig into his words. Start praying. Start meditating on his words. Start spending time with your Heavenly Father. That should be the most important part of your day every single day. And when you make that happen, I guarantee you're going to know what the Lord has laid before you. So pray for those things, gentlemen. It all starts with you taking the time to spend with your Heavenly Father. You want to be on fire for Jesus? Take it into your own hands. Go be on fire for Him. He's taking care of the salvation. You go take care of the sanctification. God's blessings. Go be the men that God created you to be. Gentlemen, that's the end of the video. That's all we got for you this time. So on behalf of all those involved in creating, editing, producing, and publishing this content, thank you for being a part of the Gird Up family. If you're not listening to the Gird Up podcast yet on whatever platform is your favorite podcast platform, you need to go subscribe right now and start listening today. There you will find over 300 episodes of interviews, man talk, and all kinds of other things all geared at helping you become a man after God's own heart. It's a great resource. Go use it wisely. We also ask that you would consider supporting Gird Up Ministries by shopping at the store at girdupministries.com, buying a shirt like this one or stickers for the back of your car, your water bottles, whatever. You can support us on Patreon by donating. Just look up Gird Up Ministries there on Patreon. Or you can go to girdupministries.com and buy us a cup of coffee. That's just a one-time $5 donation. Anything you donate goes right back into making content like this for men like you. Make sure you're following us on social media, particularly Facebook and Instagram. Like all of our posts, share them, get the word out to the world that we can and are ready to be men after God's own heart. With all that being said, gentlemen, I love you. I deeply care about you. I hope that this has been a blessing on your journey towards Christian manhood. Now go, gird up, and be the man that God created you to be. We'll see you next time.